everyone, uh, Glenn Sanford here, uh, founder of EXP Realty, and um, I've got uh, Michael Weissman on, and this is the first podcast that uh, we're going to actually talk a little bit about AI, which is obviously a huge buzz. Um, uh, we've been using it a little bit in, in EXP Realty, actually a fair bit. We've got a few different teams actually working on various aspects of AI uh, and some cool stuff uh, going on there. But um, I haven't talked to many agents that have, have used it, but AI is actually making a difference in uh, Michael Weisman's business. So, hey, welcome, uh, Michael. Thank you, Glenn. Really honored to be here. Excited. So you're fairly new to real estate, I think four years in the business, two-time icon, so congratulations on that. Yep, yep. thank uh, you. So what, so what's your, what's your background? How did you, how did you end up, uh, you know, getting into real estate? Um, well, I mean, to make a very long story, long story short, like a lot of folks, I came to it, I guess, through a kind of a roundabout way. I spent uh, my first years out of college working in film video production, doing mostly TV commercials, um, short films, corporate films for probably about 10 years. And then I just kind of parlayed that into a marketing um, uh, organization. We did, uh, you know, independent marketing and then got to financial services through that avenue. Basically saw that uh, one of my clients was a large, at the time, a regional stock brokerage. And they seemed to doing a, making a lot less work and making a lot more money than I was. And I had, at the time, still have six kids, but they were young then. And I said, how do you do this? And they're like, well, we can teach you how to do this. So I became a tax-free bond municipal salesperson in the mid nineties and grew that to being become a second vice president at a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney and um, got out of that in 2005 and really took some time off to travel. We lived overseas for about 10 years, um, came back to the States in 15 and went into real estate investing, wanted to invest in real estate. And that's what led me to get my license. And, on, and that was licensing was about uh, four and a half years ago. Okay. And, <laughs> and, um, and so, I mean, the, the, the hot topic today, I mean, you can't, um, uh, you know, mm. look at anything these days. That's, uh, I, I mean, I'm, and, and video has been on a tear because of, uh, they power a lot of the AI stuff. Um, mm. you know, everybody's basically been building stuff out because of chat GPT, but it sounds like maybe you might've even approached this even before, sort of the, the, the rage, but maybe you can tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, how, how did you come about incorporating AI into your business and, and how does that all work? Sure. Um, so, you know, I started off about four and a half years ago, really just it's kind of the old school. I, I, I decided early on I was going to work with listings and not say with buyers. And so just started for the first year just hitting the phones, making the calls and did 21 listings that year, essentially all expired with a few for sale by owners in there. And then gradually in the second year, we doubled that to about 40 and started to bring in some other forms of lead gen. I realized that I'm all about leverage and systems. I want to have something that's duplicatable that I can roll out, whether I'm sitting in Maine or anywhere in the country. And so as we realized that we wanted to generate more of an inbound lead flow, we started to get uh, to optimize our profiles, both on YouTube and especially on Google and Google local um, services to be found. And that became really successful in year three. Um, we closed 30 deals off of inbound leads from Google. And this is one my, I give credit to my son, Ben, who's also an EXP agent. I have three licensed agents, Glenn, um, three kids who are licensed with EXP, a fourth one coming soon. So we're definitely a family, a family team and a family business. And Ben started working with the SEO and we realized that in, in order to really use the AI, initially we used it very simply like a lot of agents will do to write a property description. And wow, this is amazing. You can put in your information there and you can create really great craft descriptions very easily for your MLS. But then we realized that kind of the, 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 the roadblock or the, the hitch to, to get really good SEO is really good content, right? And good local content is what Google wants right now. So Google is looking, they're using AI to look at us. And when we realize that we have to, we can use AI to help us be found. And so it's always based on using good original content. That's the first thing you realize about AI. If you just ask the AI engine, ChatGPT, to write me a, a great blog post about the main real estate market, it'll do it, but it only knows what's on the internet. 
and it'll essentially go out and kind of plagiarize, if you will, and pull other sources. And Google will realize it's done that and will not score you as original. And it won't help your help your cause. They want to actually index that that particular post. So what we realized was that we could we could start using the chat GPT because the real key to for SEO, and my son Ben really worked on this now for our team and about 40 other teams around the US, is that it's how you structure the format. So the content is 85% original. But what Google wants to know is, is it structured properly? That's where SEO really comes in. And where it normally would take, it could take hours um, and a fairly high hourly rate for an a SEO expert to structure content in an SEO format, ChatGPT can structure it in a matter of seconds, probably milliseconds for that matter. So to give you an example, what, what we want to write a really creative piece of content. Let's say one of my agents, now I have 10 agents on the team, or the other agents we support around the country, we want them to write really good localized content that's going to pull traffic. So we will send them a Google form and with a pre-researched topic about a local market or real estate topic. We'll ask them to answer these eight questions on there, either by dictating the questions like an otter AI to transcribe it. And then the questions will go back uh, to my son's form. He has a form that collects it, connects directly to the chat GPT through their open API. So we don't have to touch it. Now, it's really important now that the agent answer these questions and told some stories. We ask for that. Tell us an experience you had with, a, with a, a particular client, for example, how you found them a home or won the offer in a competitive market. So the content is all original. And then you instruct ChatGPT, and he does this automatically to, from these eight questions, he runs it through a series of filters to, create, to, to have ChatGPT create a perfectly formatted, using only the content we're providing, an original blog post of original content and ChatGPT can do that. It can edit it, so it can be your editor. You know, all good authors have an editor, right? If you go back in the time of Hemingway and you know, the original, um, you know, the old authors, they all have they all have editors. They would write a million words, and the editor can cut it to half a million and make it make a best selling book. So ChatGPT can take the original words and the stories of an agent without having to and worry about the the grammar so much or the structure. It can structure that into a really um, nice blog post. It'll still be original content, but most importantly, it'll put it into a format that now SEO wants to see, which is the H1, the H2 uh, header, the uh, titles, the subsections, because that's what SEO really is, is that can Google read it? So my son always says you have two clients, right? You want to be able to, to write for a person. I should write to Glenn. I, I'm thinking of an individual I want to write to, but I, I need to format it and structure it so that a search engine can read it. So this all happens in the background. So the agent records their answers, they click send, it goes into the chat GPT right through their open API. And within five minutes, they have back a fully formatted, SEO optimized um, blog post in perfect HTML. They go over to their KV core site, open up their blog and paste it in. Perfectly done. And that's within five minutes, they have it right back. So we, we've saved massive amounts of time Right, we've gotten agents to do something that they would hard pressed to do on their own, and um, we see the results. We've seen people, you know, with one blog post get first page rankings uh, inside of just a couple of months from just you know this awesome. type of content. So yeah, so that's a kind of long way of saying so, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. So is it? Uh, so what are? I mean, obviously that that's a it, it's a, a great use case, and I totally get it. Um, the um, you know, the, the, obviously the prompting plus the additional content plus mm -hmm. the, uh, plus probably whether it be wiki pages or whatever you're sort of using as back backdrop information, um, you're, you're then allowing for this new content to be created and then mm -hmm. put up. Um, and then, and then, um, you've got, uh, I'm sure various, various linking strategies inside mm -hmm. of that. Yep. So, absolutely. Um, yep. And, and the key is it has to be 85% original. If you're not 85% original, ChatGPT can format it. They're, Google's okay with that. The, S, Google, the Google algorithm is okay with that. If it pulls more than 15% outside of what the agent or the, or the author wrote, it'll get dis dis disallowed. It won't get indexed. So that's right. why we'll, we'll tell it, just using the information provided here, create what we want to, out, to the output. Wow, very cool. So... Yeah. Um, 
and and that has uh, uh, resulted obviously uh, a lot or more lead flow coming in. Oh, yeah. Like what what's the what's been the lead flow that's come from these mm -hmm. sort of this, these SEO optimization strategies? Yeah, yeah, that's a great that's a great question. So, like I said, initially when I first got into the business, I got to about forty sides a year, pretty much on my own, just through the you know, the old, you know, bang the phones, make the calls. Um, like I said, I'm a systems type of person. I, I came, I'm, I'm 59 now. I came in at 55. I, I wasn't going to be like, I knew I wasn't going to be like the agent. That's, you know, your hometown social agent you see everywhere in the supermarket. So you have to know kind of where you're at, right? I, I'm the systems person that drives traffic in. So we now, let's say of the 80 or so deals we've closed in the last 12 months, more than half of them are coming in through SEO. So about 40 closed sides are coming in through that. And those are, those are literally phone ringing, paying, I found you online. You know, we looked you up, we, looked, we searched for a real estate agent, sell my house, you know, in areas that we cover, which is pretty much the whole state of Maine. And it's also combined, there is some, you know, there's Google has multiple ecosystems now on Google Local. In fact, you might not remember, but I think I introduced you to my son um, at the, uh, at shareholders. There was one, one evening, there was the, um, the uh, Explorers, um, little get together there, and you were kind of talking about it. You were telling us about you were telling us about the uh, the my my lake my lead, but the 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 Google Eco platform right now is absolutely the the number one platform to, to search optimize on, because Google right now is they are out to become the authority when someone is searching online for a local service provider in their markets, and and they're going to outdo Zillow, they're going to outdo Realtor.com, they're going to do everybody because they're the 500 pound gorilla when people search for anything. And so by creating this content, you're not only getting found on the local pages, it's also boosting your, your local services presence and your maps presence because they're, they're, they're tying this all in together. So the new Google engine actually looks at all of that. And when, when you search for real estate agent near me or best real estate agent to sell a house near me, Google will go to these profiles you've created, look at your content that needs to be original with experience. They actually want to see experience now. They're gauging how experienced a person is through AI that provides the service, right? So if you're just copying and pasting off of like, you know, a generic, you know, I don't know, NAR story, I'm not, you know, just, just for you, just to pick a, you know, a generic right. provider, mm -hmm. right? They're going to know that. But if you're talking about stories that happened in your hometown and your actual experience with a, with a buyer or seller, they know that and they will deliver that result above others. And so, you know, okay. It's, it's, it's got to the point where we we dominate in Maine. Now, if you search anywhere in Maine, almost for a local real estate agent, we're going to come up almost in every city and, and county in, in the state, which helps us expand and grow and, and help the rev share, obviously, to expand and grow and referral partners. And we're rolling it out in about 30 other markets now. My son has tracked this. Um, he manages about 40 different profiles now for agents. A lot of them are EXP. Um, and he attributes about 3,000 leads, 300 closings, and almost 3 million GCI. To, to to this work, you know, and tracking okay. it through. So it's significant. And so your closing percentages, at least just the, right now, is yep. is tracking around 10%. And exactly. I, I, yep. I assume that'll go up over time because it some does. of those just haven't converted. Yeah, what we find is the leads that come in through these sources generally convert at a 10% rate from the first call. In other words, as opposed okay. to like, we, we used to run a lot of PPC. I spent like a year and $1,000 a month with PPC which if you're really good at your follow-up and we can use AI for that too, like we do just to keep in touch and automations, you're shooting for like a 3% conversion rate. Maybe, you know, the rock stars are getting four, right? After a year here, these leads are getting bottom of the funnel leads. People that are searching their high intent searches, looking for a specific service or a specific home, they're going to convert 10% from that first call. And then with, with, with follow-up, another couple percent will drop out of there fairly readily. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So, so then, um, where else uh, are you using uh, are you using AI? Um, I mean, certainly with um, with them with the with the way we can communicate with the agents. In other words, the agents unless they won't want to write blog posts. So I sort of touched upon that, right? You know, sometimes what I find is 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 with when I'm working with with agents and coaching, the easiest things to do are often the easiest things not to do. So tell an agent they have to make a couple pieces of content a week or one a week, hey, no problem, I can create one a week. Well, who's doing it, right? We, we know it's a very small percentage. So if we can make it very easy, like here's click this link, here's eight questions, 
just take your phone, answer the questions, tell a story. Don't worry about what comes first, what comes second, what comes third. Just tell the story and then use uh, like Otter AI on the back end to transcribe it. Now you've used AI for the transcription process, right? So that, that, that's really effective. Um, so it, it's, you know, AI should replace, my son likes to describe it, things that would be very time consuming or expensive. It's gonna be the best use, use of AI. Right. right. I've it. been using uh, Firefly's.ai. Have you have you used that platform yet? I I, I was using Otter. Now I'm using no, Firefly's. I've, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it, but similar, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really it's really interesting um, in that it will actually write an amazing summary of the conversation, mm -hmm. and actually it does it does uh, it it's the best summaries I've ever seen. It's like um, and and if I was to have an assistant. Uh, that was to like say what was discussed and what was agreed to and all that type of stuff. They it, and they had to use a recording. It take them a couple hours of exactly. sort of figuring it all out. Yeah. And and yeah. five minutes yeah. after the call is done, mm. I get this super mm. detailed summary mm. and it's super yep. accurate. And yep. uh, I just talked to a gentleman the other day and he says, "Yeah, it passed my internal turning test. I think it's <laughs> the best summary I've ever seen." Um, uh, and, uh, so let's, so what other, um, so you're using, uh, it, those are, are you using any, um, are you using any chatbot stuff? Um, we haven't, not so much. I have in the past. Um, so before I had, before I had KV core, I was running on follow up. I've had multiple CRMs in, before I came to EXP, uh, we had, we had, we had a CRM that used a chatbot. Um, most of which are provided by a company. I think it's structurally one of these companies in the back end. And um, so we found it to be somewhat effective, but they were also very, they were very costly. They wanted a hundred dollars for like only like a hundred leads, something like that, or very, it was very expensive to, to put the, their AI chatbots in. So we haven't used it yet, but I think certainly there's a, there's a, there's a place for that, at least in an initial conversation to, to get the, the person to the right, you know, human, so to speak. I think there's, there's a limit to how far it can go as far as, you know, people can sense when they're talking to a chat, a chat, chat bot, even if it's very, very good. So getting it to the right person, I think is, it's, um, would be important, but we haven't really played with that too much. So I don't, couldn't really give, you know, other than using the one that was in the other CRM that I had for a while. Okay. And yeah. you're, um, you're, you're using, um, uh, KV core is Absolutely. the CRM yeah. that you guys yep. are using. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, and you've you obviously you worked with different CRMs. How, what do you yeah. like about uh, what about uh, obviously the prices, right? Sure. But uh, what do you like about uh, KV Core? Um, well, KV Core, I mean, certainly the prices, right? It, we we knocked the thousand. We saved a thousand dollars a month when we switched over with from the team platform to the KV Core team platform over here. That was off of coming off of a CR interactive site. The um, first of all, it's the. I mean, it has everything you need as far as bells and whistles, as far as being able to automate keep doing your follow-ups and, and track everything. Uh, the website in the front end, and this is fun. I've heard people say, you know, this CRM is no good. It's for SEO. That one's no good for SEO. Um, KV Core is excellent for SEO. It's very customizable and optimizable if you know what you're doing with it, if you use it properly. And so the, their front end website is excellent. Um, you need to have a top level domain to do what we're describing. So getting that, that add on, which, a lot of people will think is maybe just, you know, a $12 just to use your name. It's actually not. It's $12 a month. So you can get on a little piece of digital real estate and take you off of the shared server because you will not be indexed on the shared server. So the SEO work we're describing, you need to have a top level domain, which, you know, you guys provide us, you know, through, um, through KB Core. Once you have that, the SEO is excellent. The blogging is excellent. The customization is excellent. It pulls in our Google reviews. Um, easily. And it, the, the communication between the back end, meaning the what's on my phone, let's say, and the front end to know what's happening with your clients is excellent. The searches, you know, updating them in real time so that your searches update as they, as they change their search pr parameters, it changes. Um, being able to make phone calls out from it. We let, I encourage all my agents, make your calls through the KV Core platform. It records your call, you know, and also records that you made the call. So you can keep yourself accountable and know when to call them back and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, just an overall, a really, really excellent platform. That we, if you use it well, it's, it will make you a lot of money. 
<laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so um, you, you know, obviously you've been building your business out at at EXP, mm-hmm. uh, and it sounds like you're very you, you're analytical. Certainly, your 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 son <laughs> is as well. Um, you've got uh, three three. Uh, going on for uh, your yep. your your family uh, getting licensed with EXP. What what is it that you uh, that you like about EXP versus uh, versus the other models you've looked at? Oh sure. Um, well, I mean, it has to be that the I mean, just the the whole the idea of the the entrepreneurial aspect that's baked it's baked right into the model. That's what first attracted me to it when I was at the you know big box franchise looking looking in was. You can tell I'm a natural born entrepreneur I've, and I also like to be able to build things that work and have a system that works. And EXP just, I don't even, it, it even look outside looking in, I didn't realize the potential it had till I'm on the inside now. And even that whole first year, probably maybe didn't realize it so much. And the more you plug into it, the more you realize, you know, what you and the executive staff and the technology staff has done to give us a system that you can just take and just, you can just build a rocket ship with it. And really it's, I say that, you know, it sounds hyperbolic, but it's a hundred percent true, right? What we're building here now and then have ownership of it is just, it's just the next level. There's nothing else that compares. So I'd say that the entrepreneurial, you know, I don't even call it the DNA that's baked into this model for a true entrepreneurial agent. I can't see where they'd be anywhere else. Awesome. Well, I, I agree with you. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, I guess so. you know. but that's, but that's to me, that's everything, right? It's, it's just a combination, right? And, and the fact that the, the, a platform like this, right? So, you know, we have 88,000 agents. I'm, I'm fortunate to have achieved icon, you know, two, hopefully now three times can be on a podcast with our CEO having this conversation is, is a level of collaboration and connection. And I, I don't think, you know, it's just, it's in, you know, every day, every I'm on amazing, Podcasts. I mean, not podcasts. Um, collaborative um, Zoom calls, right? You know, I was just got off a fault, got off a call with Hank the, earlier today. Hank Avink and I'm Rich Tomasini and, and the folks in Family Tree, and it's just like there is so much growth here that I never experienced before anywhere else. So that's that was kind of a benefit that you didn't know about coming in, but now it's there. So. Awesome, awesome. Um, one last piece of advice for an EXP agent. Um, yeah, sure. Um, it's absolutely, um, you have to plug in, right? Cause I think there's, it would be, it's relatively easy. You could come over here relatively easy, get through an onboarding and then just go ahead and do what you did before. If you're coming as a producing agent or even a newer agent, you get through your mentorship program and then go out and just kind of produce and do your business, um, your real estate business here. What I found the most important thing is, and I'm guilty of it. When I first came over, you know, Glenn, I probably didn't log into World very much. Maybe the first six months didn't really log into it at all, <laughs> um, or right. workplace very much. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm guilty as charged, and now it's become such an integral part of like my success that I think every agent, if I had one piece of advice, is go out there and plug in to, to these tools that that you and the and the staff and the team are providing us. And when you do that, it just, it just, you know, takes your blinders off. And all of a sudden you just realize that like, you know, the Emerald city is right in front of you and you've just been looking down at the yellow brick road. You're not sure where you're going. So it really opens up a tremendous opportunity. So one piece of advice is plug in, get into workplace, get into the groups, you know, whatever your affinity for a family tree, whatever it might be, you're, you're up on your downline, that sort of thing. So absolutely. Good, good stuff. <laughs> well, well, Michael, thank you so much. Um, some great, uh, some some great clues today. I'm sure we could have went on longer. Um, and uh, y- your your website, I think, uh, realpropertyteam.com. Is that yep, correct? That's yep. That's our KV course site. You can check that out and, and okay. see how we how we optimize that. Um, and we we only moved to KV Core about three months ago. Finished the transition. So what you're seeing there's a relatively new site. And um, we track it with, um, my son tracks it with like the Samrush or these apps that can track your traffic. Yep. And we've seen it gone, go up exponentially since we've started working with it. And so we know it works. And then we have other ones who track around the country as well. So we know this is absolutely effective. So, um, but yeah, that's the best way to connect with me or just in workplace, right? You'll find me or my sons in workplace. Okay, awesome. Well, good stuff. Thanks everyone for listening. And uh, Michael, thanks again. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it.